Let's go through the different shapes of noses, and you can tell us how the rhinoplasty alters these kind of shapes, and we do have examples okay. here. So the dorsal hump is basically you have a bump, you have to take it down, and again, when I, you know, there's, these are, these are just te different, te different types of noses that facial plastic and plastic people have determined are there. There's, each of them have a different technique that you have to do. The, the top two uh, up there, uh, the dorsal hump, the long nose, and the tension nose, those are ones that you can easily do with an open technique, I mean a closed technique, because all you have to do is reduce the bump, reduce the projection. Projection is the distance between the, your face and the, how far out your nose goes. The bottom ones would uh, need a open rhinoplasty because when you're over projected, it means your nose sticks out too far. It's a little harder to reduce the projection with a closed run, but you can do that. The bulbous tip is when you have a lot of, uh, your tip is really, there's no shape to it and you want to have a little more uh, angular shape, that's a great one for the open. And then the under projected, you can often use the, the open technique because you can put cartilage grafts. Now the cartilage grafts you can take from the septum, which is inside, so you have no visual uh, complication. You know, you don't, you're not gonna take it in an area that might, can, might create a problem. In many patients who've had bad nose surgery or have over-resected surgery, you need cartilage. You can take rib cartilage in case you've had a really mm -hmm. overdone nose. You can take cartilage from the ear. Any, you know, the main areas that you take rib cartilage are, I mean cartilage are from the ear or from the rib on certain occasions when there's nothing left or you've had patients who've had cocaine overdose and they've completely collapsed their nose, you can use outer plate of the bone on the, on the skull.